all righty well it's gonna be a shitty weekend so i guess it's about time for this old girl to get some much needed love love that she hasn't gotten in probably since it left the factory um got new tires for it down in the barn first uh well my main goal for today teeter quit licking the floor that's hydraulic oil you goofball um my first anyway the the my main goal for today really the, the only thing i'm looking to get done is get the wheels off and get the tires dismounted so i can get them over to tyler and he's gonna blast them and paint them for me um i got the paint codes uh in case anybody's wondering where's my notes get my notes uh, the orange is a Martin Senior number 4977. And the green is a Sher uh, Sherman Williams number 6780. Supposedly. So I guess we'll find out. Those are the numbers I got. So I'm going to go get some orange uh, mixed up in the morning. And I got to get some hardware and stuff for putting the wood in and get the wood tomorrow. Um, so yeah, anyway, get the wheels off, get the wheels off, get the tires dismounted is my thing for today, possibly get the web chain out of it, we'll see how much time I got for having dinner over at Tyler's tonight, so that's where those are going, but I also got my manual, because you need a, you need a manual for all your equipment, it's handy, um, they actually had some, like, I didn't realize how componentized these things were like they literally came like the bottom section is an assembly the sides are an assembly it showed like the axis well this is the the dealer assembly and operator's manual so it tells you basically how to put it together from the broke down kit that the dealer got it basically tells the dealer how to put it together um the tongue comes as a unit the sides come as units web chain Tells you how to mount the gearbox. Tells you how to mount all the beaters. Although, fun fact, the top two, they don't call them beaters. They call them cylinders. And then this is the distributor. Which, also, this, like I thought, is assembled wrong. Um, you can kind of see it there, but they show an actual picture at some point back here. Because that was the first thing I looked at when I got it was how they had that rear, yep, right here. So, you got your five sets of uh, paddles. The first two on either side are assembled clock to each other. So, this one's wrong. This one's actually right. So, this one's right. This one's right. This one's right. This one's right. This one's wrong. So, I'm going to have to... Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them all off and we'll lay them out on the floor and figure out what goes where and then put it back together. But, and I also think I'm going to go ahead and see how hard it is, but get cut all the rivets and knock the paddles off so I actually flatten them out better um, because they're not supposed to be wings like that. They're supposed to be flat. So anyway, they have the out two are twisted, or the outside two here twisted, the next two twisted. These two are in line with each other and then twisted and twisted. So, and not not only do they say in here that you want them like this because that gives you your most effective spread pattern as far as distributing the manure across your spread width. That's also how they have to be on there to keep the rear beater balanced. So, yeah. And then, if you weren't spreading manure, they had the silage box kit, which you basically took the rear beater, or the rear distributor, off. And you had an end gate that went on, and the side extensions, and then, um, basically, the cylinders would chew the, as you unloaded it, the cylinders would chew up the uh, silage, and... Obviously, the web chain would walk it out, and it's just a self-unloading silage wagon is basically all it is. They also had an option for an end gate, 
or a slot what we would now refer to as a slop gate never seen i never knew they offered that on one of these you basically you disassemble all your uh, cylinder bars off of your top cylinder there and disassemble the drive and everything and then they had this ratchet and paw and apparently somehow they figured out a way to make and i could probably go back in the books it shows you the kit to buy with all the parts but they figured out a way to make these guys engage um oh actually it shows it right there Apparently, there's another set of something else that goes on here, and you bolt it to one of these, and it, it's uh, wood bats, and it wraps up around that top shaft, which is what the, the ratchet is, so you can lock it up. And then this was the important picture for me. Because this show, gives you a pretty good indicator of how it's supposed to be painted, which is going to be a lot more involved than I initially thought. Because basically you got the rims are orange, the box is orange, the tongue is green, the gearbox and shield are green, the rear beater and all this is green, the PTO, the shaft guard, basically everything that bolts onto the box is green. So... Painting this thing is going to be a little bit more involved than what I thought, but I was happy to find that picture in there because now I know how it is supposed to be painted. So that was nice. And then the rest is just uh, parts breakdowns, but like, like, like see it basically, you the sides are, the sides, the bottom, it's all just, like you can literally disassemble this thing down, lay it on the floor, and that's probably how they shipped it. They probably had the floor assembled. They stacked everything on it, banded it together, or wired it together, and that's how it got shipped to the dealer. And also, this... Uh, where's it at? I saw a picture somewhere here. This, this manual must be a little newer than my spreader. I don't know where did I see the date at. This is a... I'm assuming... That's a print date of 859, uh, yeah, 859, 1959. And I'm thinking my spreader is older because this one was showing, uh, was that, I think it shows that guard. Is that guard different? Nope, that guard's the same. It showed this chain guard the same or uh different it was a it was uh squared off and it was a it was a full box where this one is round and i think there's something missing here because there's these two screws and some busted off sheet metal but nothing's there so i'm assuming that there used to be something here but lord knows what happened to it that thing's gonna take a little bit of work but shouldn't be too bad it's light enough it'll be easy to reform so yeah um anyway no sense in making this too much longer we're basically just looking at a book at this point oh right there that guard which is what would go there So this this manual, oh right there, there's the uh, the the end gate, what we would now call a slop gate in a, in a modern spreader. And they just have must apparently just have these two tabs that bolt in the rivet holes on that top shaft, and you just wind it up. On the forward box sides and just an alphabetical index, and then. Your standard new idea, this is all the stuff we build. I know where there's one of these two-row stock chopper. I'd, I kind of want to buy it just because I think they're neat in the way they work. Um, and there's the brush hog. That, that brush hog is actually a little older than the one we have yet. I never knew they built one of these this, this far back. It's a five-bar rake with a kicker wheel on it to make it wider. That's a 10-footer, and a standard's an 8-footer. I thought that was kind of neat. 
then your standard stuff everybody you knows new idea belt your easy drop spreaders corn pickers loader manure spreader running gears yep so anyway i guess get this sucker jacked up get it on some stands get the wheels off get the tires dismounted and that'll probably be it for today anyhow <laughs> bolt heads got enough rust in them they want to stick in the socket well, that was easy <laughs> all right we'll see what happens with the old hydraulic bead breaker here i'm curious to see how stubborn these things want to be hopefully they're not stuck but they're awful hard i don't even know how many ply they are but they also used to make tires a lot better so they might not be that many ply but they're probably really thick plies in the sidewall do not see anywhere on there but these are the tires i got to put back on it they're the same csl 24 carlisles that i put on the 525 last year these are only differences these are nine fives where that was a 900 so by all rights they should be just a touch wider but we'll see what they look like when i mount them up i was a little reserved about putting r1 tread pattern back on that thing but after i got the tires i'm like Eric, those are gonna you don't need them because it's not a ground drive spreader but still those are going to look pretty damn good on there so i was kind of happy i bought them they ended up being 250 and some change of tire which i didn't think that i didn't think was that bad so anyhow see what we can make happen here eh that was a chore them hard ass old sidewalls did not want to give up and i couldn't get them pushed down to get my hand in there to get any tire lube on them so 
I had to do them dry. But I cheated. I got one bead off, got the tubes out where I can get a sawzall in there, and then I I just sawzall the second bead, and I was basically able to pull them off by hand after that. It's a shame that the uh valve stems were getting so rotten on these tubes because these are good American tubes. I bet they got almost as much rubber in the tube as they do in the tire. But them valve stems were getting sketchy. And the valve stem holes in the rims are going to need some attention real quick. This is the worst of the two. The other one's the other one's not great, but this one's got starting to sneak over here. So clean them up real quick. Do a little welding, I guess. All right, so I got the rims cleaned up, and they are both pretty bad, but. Uh, there was enough there that I can tell the location of the original hole. And I'm going to do the old trick. I got some 5.8 flat washers that I've modificated. You can lay them in there like that, weld them in, and then you can come in from the front side and dolly it out and weld it. And then you can weld it or sand it off all nice and smooth on the outside. And because the inside, all you got to do is get it smooth enough, it won't hurt the tube. But you won't be able to tell from the outside. But it'll be all the repair will be on the inside so that's the plan well that didn't turn out too bad you could probably do a little bit better with body if you went in there with some body filler and spend a little time but for what they are by the time you get a coat of primer in there and a couple of coats of paint you'll probably hardly ever see you'll probably hardly see it unless you're looking for it but i dare say compared to what i started with that turned out pretty damn good this one this one was the challenge because i started welding on it you can, you can probably tell i kind of lost the weld profile it's kind of round now instead of square which i did the best i could with it but uh as soon as i started welding back here i started blowing through it all the way around that was that one was rough so basically this entire thing is weld in that washer there's not a whole lot of the original rim left there i basically made it so all things considered i don't think that's that bad so for for manure spreader rims i think they're going to be just okay so anyhow i think i'm going to call it quits for today get these things over to tyler so we can blast them and we will attack the major undertaking of the wood replacement tomorrow okay so i'm gonna start off by saying i apologize i kind of skipped a video in a few steps it's it's changed just a little bit since the last time you you saw it um i got here this morning mom and dad weren't awake so i couldn't go in and get the camera so i got the web chain out and got the uh, front plate out and then by that time mom and dad were awake so uh, they could babysit teeter and i went and got my bolts and lumber and i was gonna get paint but apparently there's only two guys at napa that can mix paint and neither one of them are working today so i'm gonna have to get paint monday um and then i got back by the way finding lumber for this thing was a bitch because i had to tear i had to get one by six and one by eight and i had to tear both bunks completely apart at lowe's to find the 13 boards that i needed because every one of them that i was finding either had great big baseball sized knots in them that were loose already or they were warped or they were dripping sap because you know god forbid we dry lumber we'll just mill that shit and send it off down the road or the ends were split or there was knots along the along the, the cut on the side it would just lumber anymore is a fucking joke i tell you what but i digress then i got back here and i started fiddling around with the beaters because i wanted to take those apart to get the danger out of the way of tripping and falling or uh while we're trying to get 
the boards in and out of here skewering ourselves on the beaters back here the top one i'm not worried about it's up out of the way but plus i had to get the lower the lower beater i had to get the bars off because you need to get in here to get these uh deflectors back so you get the boards in and out and the, the bars were in the way of that so i torched the bars off there i got all the all the parts are laying that's a lot of parts so i did that and then i got to looking and it's like well this is gonna be easier if i take the chain off and all the drive sprockets and stuff so i took the chain and all, all chains off and the drive sprockets and which came off really easy i damn near pulled them by hand i could turn i could almost turn the puller by i had to, i'd use a puller and i could almost turn the puller by hand they were just stuck enough that they had to be inconvenient but i'll take that over heating and beating any day of the week so far actually everything on this has come apart pretty easy other than i had to torch the bolts out of those beater bars for obvious reasons because they're all manure rotten but uh yeah so i think the next step is just going to be getting the boards out and i don't think i'm going to bother even trying to be that gentle with them because there's nothing there's not a single complete board actually i take that nope there's not there's not a single complete board in this that isn't rotten somewhere so there's just not even enough of the lumber in it to use to make patterns so might as well just break it all out throw in the burn pile and i can get the uh go back to granddad's in the morning we can get the the new lumber milled for it and i can just lay everything in there clamp it down go through mark all the holes drill them bolt everything in wham bam thank you sam so uh yeah that's basically where we're at is just knocking the boards out and going from there like i gotta say i apologize i didn't video a whole lot it's one of them deals where i i came back and got started on it and i was just fiddling with it and next thing you know an hour's gone by and it looks like this i'm like oh shit i probably ought to stop and take some video here at some point so that's where we're at and just like that i got a whole pile of dead tree carcass and a bare frame and i was worried about getting them rivets out but i was taking the wood out i was like you know if i drive them or use the head and drive them down to get them loose and then just saw the head off or grind the head off and push them through by hand because i already went through and whacked one row of them and got them loose and just so it's really not going to be that hard to even get them rivets out of there there's just a lot of them but i gotta get in order to make life easier i gotta get this damn gearbox off which wouldn't be bad except for that sleeve and that sleeve do not want to move so probably just after talking to dad gonna slit them cut them off and make new ones because it looks like that one might have a key but it looks like this one's just two pins so they're they'd be they're gonna be real easy to make and dad like like dad said you can screw more stuff up trying to heat and beat and get everything apart rather than just cutting them and moving on with life so i think that's what we're gonna do but i'd really like to uh get rid of this wood so i don't gotta keep walking over it i was gonna go put the loader on the 1600 so i can just haul it back to the woods and dump it and let it rot but supposedly we got naders coming and I don't want to be caught up there in a damn thunderstorm putting loader back on the tractor. So I don't really know what to do. But it's just inconvenient having that pile of shit there. So I got to figure this out right quick. Well, I'm here to tell you when I started this this morning, this is not how far I thought I was going to have it tore down. And technically to do everything that needs done to it, it's got to go even further. But for the time being, this is all the further it's going to go. There ain't, there really ain't shit to this thing once you get the wood off of it and take the gearbox off. There's just, there's not a whole lot here. And then you take the gearbox off, that beater's got to come out. And you're pretty much left with nothing. But, uh, all I got left to do 
and just drive all the rivets out. Probably try to clean it up a little bit. Might try to... Here. It'd be nice if I could catch a... Catch a hole in the rain tomorrow and take the forklift and get it outside and power wash it. And then bring it back in and get ready to put it back together. For the time being. Because it's got other stuff that needs to be done to it before, as far as like sheet metal work and fixing more and stuff and whatnot before before it gets painted so all the way but i'd say that was a good day's work i was wondering there kind of in the middle if i was going to have it all tore down today but once i started working on the wood it went pretty quick and the reason i had to get the gearbox out of the way was i had to get these rivets out of the way and almost need that bolt pattern there and all that stuff so that you can lay the boards in there and mark everything out and get all your holes drilled because you can't do it from the back side when everything's in the way so it is what it is but anyhow i guess that's enough for today i've about had it it's been hot and muggy or hot and humid and muggy and our tornadoes never showed up so that was good it all went north. So, anyhow, I guess that does it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one, which will be more spider stuff.